Thanks, Josh. Yeah, so uh, I have a short time anyway. So uh, m most of you were in my jury group, so I think some of the slides you will see same. And uh, okay, so who doesn't know me? My name is Nitish Agarwal, and uh, I'm a PhD student in inside Galway here, and work with Paul Butler in the UNLP unit. And this presentation I'm doing is about IBM Watson system. It's a question answering system won a, a quiz TV show called Jeopardy. And I will talk about like how little bit like how it's work and all that. I'm presenting this. Uh, I mentioned the name because I was uh, someone intern in IBM DJ Watson in Watson, Watson team, and I, I worked with Kane Barker and Chris Welty there. And some slides are taken from Kane and Alfio. Will, will you see here? So, what is Watson? So Watson is a question answering system, as I say, and it won Jeopardy. Why we are talking in context of Jeopardy? So in 1991, Gerard Tesaro he realized that if you want to test like how intelligent our computer system is, we, we can test it against a game. If it can play a game very intelligently, like how human play, then we can say it's really intelligent system. And after that, uh, in 92, they make this GD Gammon game. It's an intelligent board game. And then they took the challenge for making a Blue Gene system for IBM Chess. And now, they, uh, in 2005, they took the challenge to play against a TV uh, quiz show called Jeopardy. So what's the problem here? So problem is uh, you are given a natural language question over a broad domain because uh, in a game, like they don't consider it as a particular domain, but they ask you, like in a very different domain, I will show you like what exactly. And you have to deliver the precise answer. The precise answer means like you are not looking for a list of documents, but exactly the precise string what call about what tells you like this is the particular answer about this question. It needs to be very high confidence because it's telling you just one particular thing. Then so you want that it should be correct. It needs a fair justification. So whenever a machine telling you that this is the right answer then you need a justification like why machine believe that this is the right answer. Of course, it's need a fast re re response time because if it's playing game or, or something like that, then it has to complete against a human. It means like its response time should be like a human, like two, three seconds or so. So what is Je Jeopardy? So Jeopardy, as I say, is a TV uh, quiz show in America and three, uh, Contestant participate here, and then they complete each other in a way like uh, they select the category and then select the uh, level of difficulty of the question, and based on that, they have to press the button if they have the right answer and they have the enough confidence to tell that. And based on that, if someone, if uh, the, the guy who get the chance to get to to give the answer, if it's, if it, if he gives the correct answer, then he get the money. If it or give an incorrect answer, then it's lose by dollar. And if you don't answer, then they don't let you in the game. So it's a, as they say, it's a different categories. Like it's a one picture of uh, Jeopardy game. You can see there are plenty of videos on YouTube. Like uh, you, you, you can see that as well. So it's a like different category. Like uh, the context have to choose. For example, you say Final Frontier, and you can choose the difficulty level of the question. For example, four hundred dollar question is say. Four letter word for vantage point or a belief. Then, according to that, you have to press the button and then give the answer. So, what challenges they have here? Like, what's, the answer? Oh, what's the answer? Class. Class. Yeah. Well, I took this uh, from a published YouTube video. I think so. Well, I didn't remember because <laughs> <laughs> I took it. <laughs> I think so. It's say class. I didn't remember exactly if it's the right one. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, the the thing we can see here, the cha challenge is that the first is the the language of the question itself is very difficult and very ambiguous. Like, women even never realize that how ambiguous we really talk. We have several ways to say the same thing. It's a very broad domain, as you can see, it is several different categories, and we have to cover all that. It's needed high accuracy because it's needed a correct answer for 
more than 70% cushion to jump into the winning cloud because human is so good in that game. It needs high confidence because it needs high confidence to decide if it wants to press a button or not. And it's, it needs a, a very quick responsive as well because you have to press the button to get a chance to give the answer. So it's a, a very little idea like how complicated is the Jeopardy challenge against the traditional question answering tracks. So in, in 2001 and 2002 uh, track, it's a conference called uh, Tax Retrieval Evaluation Conference. They run two times like this question answering track. And there, uh, they find that, uh, so this graph shows the, uh, what type of answer is expecting for a given question. For example, you say he. So it means that answer, most probably his answer should be like a male person. So it means, what is the type of the answers here that you want to cover and then, or you have to cover to give the all the answer correct, in a sense, in Jeopardy or in track. So you can see like in two, sorry, in all Jeopardy question, they took it from the previous track and almost 20,000 question have 2,500 distinct type. It's really uh, wide uh, types in, in, in some sense. And comparison to track, just 200 distinct type cover 80% of the questions. So it's very complicated problem in that sense. So it's a deep QA architecture. And uh, so Watson built over this deep QA project and they started in 2005, as I say. So this architecture, I can tell you a little bit about it here as well, but I will cover it step by step with one example. So like question comes in and then they decompose the question in several different ways because they have to interpret what you exactly asking. And then for, uh, they try to perform a very uh, little primary search and try to find the document, relevant document. You can say like interpreted question in a form of keywords and then find out the uh, documents and then extract the candidate from that document by using some hypothesis, which I will tell you later. And then there are plenty of features to score them to score this evidence that if it could be a right answer for that particular question. And because every candidate has several evidence scoring, then they have to combine them in one single score. For that, they use machine learning method. So simply here, they train the model on previous question by using logistic regression, and then transform into the final confidence, and then you can get the final answer. <coughs> so it's a minimal deep QA pipeline uh, I can show you for uh, this particular question. So it's a categorical uh, Michigan mania. And say, in 1894, CW Post created his warm cereal drink postum in this Michigan city. Now I think you know the answer, because I know the answer. So the question comes in. And first, you need to analyze the question. So see like how complicated is the anal just analyzing the question, because it's not only we want to extract the keyword and want to search and want to perform this document search to retrieve the candidate, but you also need to understand the intention behind the question, what is exactly asked. So they need so many formalization and normalization here. For example, the dates. You say, in 1984, I celebrate my, like somebody celebrated like 400th anniversary. And you need to normalize this, these kind of dates as well. So in this way, they created this interpretation in a, in a form of a graph. So they do like so much NLP techniques here, like dependency parsing and all the uh, different, di different kind of things like relation extraction as well and some kind of temporal reasoning as well. And based on that, simply they try to get the what is the lexical answer type. So lexical answer type is try to see what type of answer we are lo looking for. And based on that, they got you looking for Michigan City in this particular qu question. Then, by, because we interpret the question in several ways, then we perform primary search. So what is this primary search? So simply, primary search is a Lucene or Indri. It's an open source API to perform your search over some given corpus. And they use the Wikipedia corpus because it's a, it covers very high domain. In, in some sense, it's, it's very high co coverage because 
they analyze this and they see that 95% of Jeopardy answers are covered in Wikipedia. And the other way, like 98% of the track answers are also covered by Wikipedia. So it means like answer inside the Wikipedia, but the question is how to extract that because this is a natural language. It's not written in a in some uh, uh, structured way. So it's simply perform this search and get the documents. So after getting this list of documents based on the ranking method, whatever you use based on that, like Lucene or Indri, now you have to generate the hypothesis. Means you have to generate the real candidates, like that is strings, which could be an answer for this particular question. So there are several different ways to do that, but uh, in very simplistic way, you can see that if some Wikipedia article uh, comes up, it means at some point we can say that the title of this Wikipedia article could be a possible candidate here. Why? Because Wikipedia is a very title-oriented document. The content of the Wikipedia article itself describes the salient feature of the title. So at some point we can say that title is the representation of this whole article. Or even, not only this, like human also uh, generate the metadata like anchor text. So you can use the hyperlinks as, as the candidate also for here. And for that, they use, of course, the both structure and unstructured data set so that they can produce more candidates uh, for a given article. After producing this article, now we need to know which one is the right answer among these so many candidates. So for that, they develop so many features. So if I remember correct, like, uh, I saw almost 150 f features. And these different features, you can imagine, like I say, uh, this particular candidate coming from a document. And document have a rank because you search by using the open source API. And similarly, extracting the passages also have a, some score. And m m m many more. So I can give you the brief idea like about a one feature called type Gurdjian, how it works. And you can see like based on that, uh, how they decide like if this is the right answer or not. So what is that type Gurdjian? Like we have the answer. Now we want to know if this particular answer is matched with the given questions. So very simply, first they perform the entity disambiguation. So they need to know <laughs> If JFK appear in the question or in the answer, then what is exactly it means? So they try to connect it with existing structure knowledge base. So here they use DPDA and Yago in this particular method, and they try to and they find okay, you are talking about John F Kennedy International Airport, not about the John F Kennedy person. And after finding that, similarly they do this at predicate level. So predicate disambiguation matching it means. You want to find out the cl at class level. It's basically the word sense disambiguation so that you don't confuse between the similar words. And then they retrieve the type. So what that mean? Because as I show you in in previous slide, that they know that what is the lexical answer type. So it means they know what they looking for, what they looking for in the type of the answer. And then you have to match these types one side with the question. And other side is the answer. So for John F. Kennedy, they try to find the type from the Yago, and they found is okay, it's in Yago it's a one just upper class, it's a super class sage, it's airport in Long Island. But it doesn't solve the problem because at other side we are lo looking for airport, because our lexical answer type say we are looking for airport. So in that sense, you need to align this lexical answer type with the type what you are getting from type coercion. And you go up to the hierarchy. And you find further, OK, we are finding this is the airport. OK, yeah, it means that John F. Kennedy also is a type of airport. So based on that, they do the scoring, like type coercion has the score and geolocation and further on. And finally, they merge them together, as I say, by using logistic regression. And you have the final answer is Battle Creek. Yeah. So, it's a little bit showing you uh, during the time, like how they developed this system. So it's a works and performance over time. So here you, you can see some dots, and green and other one is red. So this is the real human performance in previous Je Jeopardy games. So green dots is the average uh, human winners. 
the, it's showing on x-axis, it's showing you that how many times a human get the chance to give the answer. So you can, we can see like normally 50% time a human get the chance to give the answer because he enough confidence to press the button. And 90% of time he was right, almost. But what is this red dots? So red dots are, it's a grand champion, Kane Janning. He won 74 consecutive matches. So he was as good. See, it's almost 70% time he got the chance and 90 to 95% time he was correct. So it was really hard to beat to this grand champion at that time. So it's a little graph here. It's a baseline system in uh, 2006. It's a system called Pequant. And that time they tried to see like how we perform on uh, on the Jeopardy question, and they see they are out of box. But during the time, then they shift from PQA to deep QA system, and you can see this uh, little gap, and it's showing you the old uh, Watson team march into the winner crowd. And then you can see that that is a big difference between between this system which they had before, it's called PQA, and after that they have this deep QA system. And then they start developing these several features. Even in 2009, month Mars, they organized a, sh a show against Ken Jennings. And that time, Watson performed almost one of the worst performances of Ken Jennings. And it is still to go. But in 2011, almost, uh, they developed the old feature and then finishing it, and they won the Jeopardy game. So this slide is showing what I feel there what make them winning and how you win Jeopardy, basically. So what different they do? So wh one thing I feel they use is called Yuima architecture. It's an unstructured information management architecture. It's the open source, scalable, parallel, and it's a nice pipeline architecture for content analysis. Means if you have so many components in your pipeline, and suddenly you feel like your uh, 30th component not working, then you don't need to run the all the previous component because it is store your every single output of your every component in the pipeline. So you can just start your system from that pipeline. And it's use some standard ways called CAS. They do, they believe in extreme programming, it means the all the searchers sit together to discuss, to code, to do brainstorming. So, at they say in some videos as well, like they change their life to make this system. Means they don't sit into the office because everyone sits in one big room. It's called Watson Lab, and they all work together. And anybody can ping anyone because if they are running something and they are saying something, even we in turn sit with them in the whole room, and we could ask anything like with anybody. That's amazing. They do weekly and monthly error analysis. So they do very frequent analysis of different components. So they try to see like if one particular component is not working and why is not working. So that's the way how you make your system perfect. So one way you give the idea, you publish it, and it goes on. But it's still, you have to win, then you have to make it perfect so that people can use it it's in, in some way, in a practical way. Of course, they need a powerful computation, but do they need this powerful computation just for because they have a very uh, expensive approach? Not because of that, but because they are evaluating so many candidates for making a final candidate answer. Because as you can see in the pipeline, if co question comes in, then it has multiple interpretation. Every multiple interpretation has multiple do documents. From multiple documents, there are multiple answers. And from multiple answers, so it's like thousands of evidence, and it's in the end, it's become almost hundreds of thousands of different candidates. And to do that in two or three seconds, they need a powerful computation. So just showing you that how they scale it out, so you can see that it's a powerful system they use for uh, running the Watson. And very noticeable thing that I feel there is a 15 terabyte of RAM. And right now it's 18. And they use that to store the, all the data to process that so fast, and they work on that. So is it over, or is anything next? They are doing something. Yes, so now they are going beyond the jeopardy. And 
they are developing this Watson 2.0, and Watson 2.0 basically is for specific domains. So they try to adapt the domains so that Watson can help the domain experts to do their daily life work. So mainly they are concentrating now in medical domain so that it can assist the doctors to make their decisions. So it's a simple one question I'm trying to show here. Like uh, a 48 year old woman presented her primary care physician after blah, blah, blah. And they're like more like a situations. So is this question not like a jeopardy question where you have clue and then you have to guess the particular things, but it's the other way around that it's more like a scenario. And when you go to the, doc when you go to the doctor, then doctor have so much knowledge about your previous medical re records. S and based on that, he can decide like if this particular symptom have this means just because in your case. So it's very hard for a machine to decide that if you have this particular symptom is mean different than if someone have that particular symptom. So, so as I say, for medical domain, they are not trying to make a system like a Jeopardy who will give you the perfect answer, but it's more about the interactive dialogue system so that they can interact with doctors. So like I say, it's a very specific question. They need a knowledge about the entire medical record of a particular patient. Based on that, they can do some kind of uh, answer extraction for that particular thing or like related things or try to study the previous case who have same situation and try to give some kind of information to the doctor so that doctor can interact with them. And based on that, doctor can ask more questions, try to find out the evidence for that and it would help at least like to decide them faster. So how they are doing it, I'm not covering it into the detail, but just giving you a very brief idea. So first they do the factor analysis. What is the factor here? So I showed you the previous question that no pain or pain in her abdomen. So these all kind of factors give you the concrete information about the patient situation. And these factors need, need to know the knowledge behind it, like what is this all about? And for that, they generate the hypothesis. So the generating hypothesis is different here. It's not the candidate answer. Even it's kind of knowledge about this particular factor and, and particular <coughs> sub question to ask in the, this big question and try to, to do, uh, try to make an inference chain system for Watson. It's, they call it a Watson inference chaining system, VIX where they try to build a big graph in that particular scenario for that particular symptom and that particular d disease. And based on that, they teach Watson and doctor can interact with it. So very simple thing like, so uh, I was, I say I was uh, someone intern there. So I work on this particular component called factor analysis. So it's a given question here where first they have uh, one particular trained system to do this factor identification. And now my job was to find out the correct sense in a one big knowledge base called UMLS, which is the uh, integrated source of many different medical ontologies. So we have to find out what is this means, this particular, for example, like difficulty in walking. But the main problem is, is that you cannot say like this difficulty in walking have same meaning in every case because it's highly dependent on the context and the medical patient situation. So that's why this is very tough problem comparison to this classical name entity recognition or name entity linking problem. We call it uh, context-based uh, concept resolution with structure and structure resources. Right now we are in the process to file this patent and we'll do then write the paper on that. So there are many more other components like factor analysis in Watson 2.0 of course. They won Jeopardy, start assisting doctors now but yeah, they are also doing some domain ad adaptation for other domains like finance and education. And of course, it's not an end. It's just the beginning for them, I guess, like to give the thanks to the people. Thanks. Questions? Mm -hmm.